Hi, welcome to One on the Page. I am Scott. We're doing ranking of Stephen King short stories, doing stories 55 through 51. Let's go ahead and get started. Story number 55 is in the book, The Bizarre Bad Dreams. It is Mr. Yummy. Ridiculous name for a short story, unless it's about a serial killer, which it's not. Mr. Yummy is uh, about an assisted living home where people see some type of apparition or a person that has some meaning to them. And then it's basically like this is the harbinger of death or is it death itself? It is one of King's stories about mortality and old age and, and death something that as he gets older he has done very well uh, not to say he isn't done well earlier uh i think of the reach which we have not talked about yet also uh, another story about death he handles this very well much in the same way he used to write stories about children very well uh, he wrote those when he had young children he's writing about old age and mortality as he is a senior citizen uh, it, it does talk a little bit about uh, one of the characters in here is gay it does talk about the AIDS epidemic I think for King who in the past, perhaps well, well meaning, uh, has been a bit clumsy when it comes to people who don't fall into his demographic, the straight white male, you know, uh, when he's written about women or black people or uh, gay people, he has not done particularly well particularly in the 70s and 80s but as he's gotten older I think he has done fairly well I'm not one to be able to judge necessarily if it's the case but at least when I was reading I was like oh this is much better than what I have been used to from King story number 54 is also in the bizarre bad dreams it is the little green god of agony it was a root it was originally published in the anthology of Book of Horrors uh, in 2011. It's basically about a rich man trying to uh, get rid of his pain after an accident two years previously, uh, told through the point of view of a nurse. It's, it's about pain and what we will do for it and what money can and cannot buy. I probably deliberated about this one and Mr. Yummy, what place each would be, more than I deliberated about any other story previously. Uh, even talking now, I'm like, well, should Mr. Yummy be ahead of this or behind? I think the main reason that I place this ahead of this is just well, I personally would probably say I like Mr. Yummy a little bit more. This one, well, not necessarily being an original story. Uh, it's a type of story we have seen before. It's to me, it's a little bit more original than Mr. Yummy. Story number 53 is in Nightmares and Dreamscapes. It is Omni's Last Case. Now, when it comes to stories in Nightmares and Dreamscapes that has the word case in it, this is not the best one. Uh, we will get into that later. Uh, that one also happens to have one of my favorite characters in fiction, and it's probably not the one you're thinking of. Just look up the table of contents for Nightmares and Dreamscapes. I think you'll be able to figure it out. This one is about an author of crime novels who is 
thinking of killing off his main character, basically. And the character does not like that idea and tries to take over. A little bit of a metafiction. Uh, it is something we have seen a little bit before, uh, particularly in uh, the dark half. Uh, obviously, we have seen King write about writing many times. Uh, there's a bit of a joke about how many of his characters are writers. Not as much as with King in Awful Endings, King and main characters being writers isn't as prevalent as it is talked about, but it, it is there. Uh, it does happen. If you were to go by the job of the main character in a, a King story, writer would not have the majority, as in over 50%, but if we were playing Family Feud, it might be the number one answer. <laughs> uh, this is another story, like I talked about last week, that I enjoyed more at the time than I do now. At the time, I hadn't had a lot of experience with King and writing about writers or about uh, fictional characters kind of taking over uh, I have had more experience now so it's not as much of a novelty this is one it's never been my favorite story but it has dropped a little bit to me than what I might have ranked it previously number 52 in nightmares and dreamscapes is Popsy a desperate man has decided in order to make money because he owes people money uh, basically to kidnap children and, and sell them. He just happens to kidnap the wrong child who says his popsy is coming to get him and his popsy does come to get him. Uh, this is a variation on King and vampire stories. Uh, he does say that Popsy in here could be, he doesn't say 100% for sure, but he says it could be the same one in the Night Flyer, which is in Nightmares and Dreamscapes also, which we haven't talked about yet. I, I like that one a little bit more than this. This one is a bad guy getting his just desserts. It, it's a fun read. Uh, definitely has an ending. <laughs> uh, but especially if you read King, you know King. I think you kind of know where the story is going. That doesn't take away from the enjoyment of it, though. I still like this story. It's just never going to be one of my favorites. But I have this thing where I will, after I read a book, I will sometimes pick up the book and go through scenes. I will read this, oh, I love this scene, then skip 30, 50 pages, and then I'll read the next scene that I like. I, I don't reread the book. I do reread books, but I scan read books after I've read them often. Like I have said before in Stephen King videos that uh, Insomnia, which I have reread several times the entire book, but the ending chapter of Insomnia is the piece of writing I have read more than anything, which means I have just gone to that scene and read it and not read the rest of the book. So if I were to pick up Nightmares and Dreamscapes, I would not necessarily go like, okay, I'm going to read Popsy and then I'm going to put the book up. But if I do pick the book up and I'm like, okay, I will read the stories that I enjoy and then skip the rest, 
I'll probably reread Popsy, but I will never pick up Nightmares and Dreamscapes and go, oh, I'm doing this because I want to read Popsy. Uh, story number 51, published in just after sunset, originally published in Playboy magazine in 2007. It is Mute. It is about a man who picks up a hitchhiker. As far as he can tell, the hitchhiker is deaf. He makes that assumption. He uses the car ride as a, an excuse to vent some of the stuff that is going on in his life to an audience, but an audience that he assumes cannot hear him, basically get it off his chest. Uh, that includes an affair that his wife has been having. Also, she's a compulsive gambler. She has racked up some debt for him. Uh, when he stops at a rest stop, his, his, his hitchhiker has left. He then later discovers that uh, his wife and her lover had been beaten to death. Uh, he also later discovers something on his desk that indicates that his hitchhiker knew all the stuff that he was not deaf. He heard this and he decided to repay him for the ride by taking care of some of his problems. Uh, and the story kind of like, oh, about guilt. How much responsibility do we have for something? Obviously, when he was venting, he didn't necessarily mean to have an avenging angel uh, do something for him, but he kind of benefited from it. So I, I it, I wouldn't say it's an open-ended story. We. We know the result of the story, but it's kind of open-ended and it's like, we don't necessarily know what's going on in his head. And all this is, is given through the context of he's confessing to a priest. Uh, and it's kind of like, what if I wanted this to happen? So uh, this isn't necessarily, like I said, previously one of those stories that I would automatically go to but it is one of those stories that I probably think about more than any of the other stories we have talked about already except man with a belly which I think about a lot because it was so awful and it is is my goal to mention that story in each video because it was truly awful uh but this one is one that I think about because it's like how responsible are we for things that we don't necessarily make happen, but they happen because of us? Uh, it, very interesting story. So we are now in the top 50. Our next story will be story number 50. I do already know what that story is because it happens to be the last story in the th third quarter of stories, as I said, I broke them up into quarters, even though they weren't even quarters. And this is the last story in that third quarter that I haven't ranked. I know what that story is. And then pretty much every story from here on out is good to great. Some of them just... If they had just some, done something differently, they would reach that great realm, but gladly read a collection of 50 stories that are these stories and be happy. Be a long ass book, but uh, please like and subscribe, leave a comment. I will talk to you next time.